Our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and verses 18 through 23. It's Matthew 13, beginning with the first verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then jumping down to the 18th verse. Here then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but, care, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold and another sixty and another thirty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. People talk to me. Might surprise you to know, but it's not just because I'm a preacher, because it happened before I became a preacher too. A lot of times on the bus in Pittsburgh, people t came up and just talked to me, but that's a story for another time. But people have always felt comfortable enough to tell me their stories. And they've come to me in various states of despair, depression, and hopelessness. And I try to show them and tell them about God's love. I remember when I went on a work trip to an Indian Pueblo in New Mexico one year. And I had the opportunity to talk at length with an Indian man named Clarence as we worked together building a greenhouse. And between me banging my thumb with a hammer and him telling me to swing from the bottom, we sh I shared with him some of my own story and how I came to the Christian faith. The next year I came back on another work trip and Clarence was so excited to see me because he wanted to tell me that he was now a Christian and he was overjoyed at what God had done in his life. Now, that's a case where I got to see the bountiful harvest. But even if we don't get to see the end result, we must continue to plant seeds everywhere we go. Most often it will be someone else that may water and another that will see the harvest. Nonetheless, the harvest is still there. This parable presents a scenario involving a peasant farmer. This scenario was familiar to the gospel's largely rural audience who knew well the ways of its agriculturally based society. The sower sows seeds which fall into four different types of ground with quite different consequences. In verse four, seed that falls on a path is eaten by birds. In verses five to six, Seed that falls among rocks sprouts quickly, but lacking depth of soil, dries up in the sun. In verse 7, seed that falls among the thorns is choked by them. But in verse 8, we see the seed that falls into good soil and produces an abundant crop. But the sower scatters his seed carelessly, recklessly, seemingly wasting much of the seed, on ground that holds little promise for a fruitful harvest. Likewise, Jesus invests in disciples who look similarly unpromising. He squanders his time with tax collectors and sinners, with lepers, the demon-possessed, and all manner of outcasts. 
Yet he promises that this prodigal sowing of the word will produce an abundant harvest. We must share the word with people like and different from us. Today's passage doesn't make sense when it comes to efficiency. The sower is extravagant with the seeds he plants. Seeds here, seeds there, seeds everywhere. That just seems like poor planning. Given today's economy, that's just wasteful. By today's farming practices, it's inefficient. With the cost of seeds and the time spent sowing, it may not even be profitable. These are not, however, the sower's concerns. There are concerns. Thankfully, this parable is about God's faithfulness and not about farming, soil quality, or how things work in this world. And the sower's world, wastefulness gives way to hope and efficiency to love and profitability to generosity. Think of how many of Jesus' parables spoke about waste. There was the shepherd who risked the welfare of the 99 sheep just to find that one lost sheep. A man gives an invitation to a banquet, but all those invited rudely refused to attend. There was the Samaritan who gave all he had to bandage the wounds of a man lying in the ditch whom he did not even know. What are these parables if not parables of extravagance, recklessness, and waste? And what could be more wasteful than for Jesus to lay his life down for people like us? But boy, I'm glad he did, aren't you? If there's any hope for the unproductive soil, it's that the sower keeps sowing generously, extravagantly, even in the least promising places. Jesus' investment in his disciples shows that he will simply not give up on them in spite of their many failings. And we trust that he will not give up on us either, but will keep working on whatever is hardened, rocky, or thorny within and among us. It takes time for many of us to realize that we need God at the center of our life. As different as the four soils are, they all hold two things in common, seeds and the sower. The sower sows the same seeds in all four soils with equal toil, equal hope, and equal generosity. The sower does so without evaluation of the soil's quality or potential. There is no soil left unsown. No ground is declared undeserving of the sower's seeds. This is not about the quality of dirt. It's about the quality of God, the divine sower. We want to judge what kind of dirt we are. Are we 40 cents a day dirt or $400 a day dirt? God simply wants to sow his life in ours. No life, no person, no soil is left unsown. Jesus did say that most of the seed went to waste. But some of the seed, wonder of wonders, took root, grew, and brought forth 30, 60, 100 times a rich reward. The parable ends in joy, celebration of great harvest. Jesus promises that our work, his word, the church's witness, are not in vain. As those entrusted with Jesus' mission today, we need to think about what this means for us as we go out in mission. Too often we're playing it safe and we're spreading the word only where we think it will be received or only where we think the people are going to become contributing members. In the name of stewardship, we hold tightly to our resources, wanting to make sure nothing is wasted. We end up stifling creativity and energy for mission by resisting new ideas, being afraid they're not going to work. Is that the worst thing in the world? If failure, failure, is it to be avoided at all costs? Well, this is the point. If the sower of ordinary seed does not become discouraged by losses, but persists with the hope of an abundant harvest, how much more should we persist in setting forth the kingdom of God? Someone saw fit to, to sow seeds so that we could be blessed to be Christians, so that we could have churches where we do, in our communities, 
And isn't it great that we can continue to work diligently to sow seed here and in many other places? Jesus' ministry was facing opposition and failure, but he kept sowing the word of God's kingdom, assured that as long as he kept sowing, God was going to win. The kingdom would come. That's an important message for us, too. In our culture, it's a culture of instant gratification. We want everything right now. Instant success, instant quarterly profits. But it doesn't always work out that way. Keep sowing anyways. Jesus' approach to mission challenges our play at safe instincts. But he gives us freedom to take risks for the sake of, a go of the gospel. And he endorses extravagant generosity in sowing the word, even in dangerous places. And though we may wonder about the wisdom or the efficiency of his methods, Jesus promises that the end result will be a great harvest. God is love, and love is generous, lavish, abundant, eager to share what is good. God won't withhold the word from anyone. God won't deny anyone access to the good news. I heard a story of a young man who was addicted to drugs and alcohol since he was a young teen. And he ended up in a halfway house, not of his own choosing. But he decided to go to church one day. And a 95-year-old woman befriended him. Lest you think... Lest we think that we can't do it, a 95-year-old woman reached out. And she befriended this man, and this man said that was the first time anyone ever treated him like he was a real person, like he was human, like he was worthy to be loved. And that changed everything. He got off the drugs. He stayed off the drugs. He became a Christian. He went back to school getting his GED and then getting nursing credentials and that is an amazing harvest. Indeed, we have all encountered people who may have thought themselves unworthy, but it is the blood of Christ that makes us all worthy. The drug addict, the embezzler, the liar, and so forth will always be welcomed at the foot of the cross. I'd like to end with the story, true story, the last one was true too, but this is a true story of a Scottish pastor who thought his ministry was a failure. In his diary dated December 31st, 1813, he wrote, this last year has been a failure. I have brought only one soul to Christ, little David Livingston. Well, Little David Livingston became a pioneer medical missionary, inventor, reformer, and anti-slavery crusader when he grew up. That Scottish pastor never lived to see the work of his life come to fruition, but he's the one who sowed the seed. And we might not either, but that's not our concern. Our concern is to keep sowing. What is required of us is the courage to keep sowing the seeds of God's kingdom. While others say, what's the use? We will keep sowing because we know how the story ends. God is going to win. I think we've all been the dirt that someone planted a seed in. We ourselves can be seeds of inspiration to others by the way we live. And we can follow in Jesus' footsteps and be sowers ourselves, sowing seeds of the kingdom everywhere we go. So may this parable encourage you as a spiritual planter, as we all seek to teach, preach, and lead others to faith in Christ. Part of the encouragement is not to be discouraged, because coming to faith and growing in it is a miracle of God's Holy Spirit, and it uses our words, our witness, our friendship to produce faith in Christ. But it's about what God does. So we don't have to worry about doing it right or wrong. The Spirit will give us the words and God will be with us. And may we produce a bountiful harvest. Amen.